So hello and welcome student to the today's lecture and this course number MA412 uh, linear algebra linear algebra and uh, today we will have lecture number Thirty-seven. Okay, so um, now recall uh, in our last lecture we discussed about bilinear forms, right? Bilinear forms on a vector space V over a field F. Okay, and that we showed that if uh, this dimension of there are many properties that the finally we showed that the dimension of v is finite sum n then um, then the space of bilinear forms is isomorphic to the space of n quotient matrices over the field f okay and the map was what so so that 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 so so this isomorphism is not unique in the sense that if you change the basis, the isomorphism will change. And if you fix the basis, say beta script beta, uh, then the map, then then uh, h beta is the matrix representation of h, right? That's something. Yeah. This is the map actually. So h goes to psi b of beta, and the psi b beta is the uh, isomorphism between these two vector spaces. Okay. And uh, and uh, corollary, we understood that the bilinear forms are actually coming from this matrix, from this person, right? So um, obviously, um, we, we can we can ask some examples. Examples. Okay, so uh, so maybe we can start with uh, uh, my space uh, V, which is R two. Over R, and um, I want to define a map which is a bilinear form because V to R by the determinant. What, what does that mean? That means you, you take uh, the vector one vector, say is R2, so you write down A1, A2, column vector, and B1, V2. And then define this is by the determinant of the matrix, which is arise from these two vectors. Then think these are two column of a matrix. Okay, so this is nothing but a one b two minus a two b one, right? Okay, um, so this this is the map, and um, so so obviously this is a bilinear form, right? So you, Whatever you use, you use a method, but this bilinear form is obvious. Okay, and uh, now, uh, so you want to find out what is the matrix. Okay, so what is the matrix? Uh, or there exists a matrix uh, A such that A will be uh, this psi of A to this respect to some, some basis bit, right? We can find out this A obviously. Now, uh, so the, uh, for the time being, let us assume my beta is the standard order basis, which is 1, 0, and 0, 1. And let us now try to check what happened to this matrix. Okay. So then, what will be A? So we know that um, this, uh, so if A equal to say AI, AI, the idea are nothing but evaluation of h at um, e i j that so this is maybe e one and this is two right okay so what will be um, this a i j is a i j sir um, h this e i j right this we discussed in last lecture. And hence you can easily find out what is a one one. So a one one is nothing but h uh, e one e one right. So e one e one 
if you allow the only one so that means a to is zero so so only this false person will be remaining right so or the first person also zero because b2 is also b2 and a2 both are zero right so is is zero then so what does that mean that mean um a1 on is zero similarly what is a12 a12 is h of e1 e2 and now you check that again from the definition uh, this is uh, so this is one zero and zero one so uh, so this person will vanish so a1 b2 means one so this is one this is remaining so this is one similarly a2 one is you can check um, e uh, e2 e1 and what is e2 e1 so um, first one will be 0 1 so e, e, e1 is 0 and second one will be uh, b1 is 0 so e1 is 0 b2 is 0 so e1 b2 that vanishes so minus e2 b1 which is 1 this is minus 1 and then e2 e2 equal to e h e2 e2 which is again uh, so, so zero zero so this is one so zero this is zero and then obviously you can find out the matrix will be of this form um, zero and then one this is minus one and zero this is the matrix okay now you check that your age uh, with respect to that the vector um, a1 a2 comma b1 b2 that you can write down in terms of a1 a2 transpose then 0 1 minus 1 0 and then uh, b1 b2 okay this is the matrix so this is obvious now right so uh, so you can easily find out the matrix with respect to any basis okay now um uh, now uh, this actually um, we'll try to give the um, answer to another question which we asked in last lecture that what happens if we change the basis then does that the corresponding matrices of a bilinear forms has some relation the answer is yes so we will define so we recall that when we discuss about linear maps then if we change the basis and then the matrix um, related to linear maps are also changing but they they are having some property they are called they are similar right here we will define another such um, idea is called congruent okay so what is that let us define it so a uh, lead we have two matrices let say a and b belongs to m n and f okay two matrices um then we say we say this congruent to a on u and to the matrix a if there exist there exist um, and invertible matrix in vertible matrix um, say Q such that such that you can we can write down the matrix V in terms of Q transpose um a e and q okay so this is my definition okay so uh, in the case of similar matrix we have q inverse aq here we have q transpose aq right um so um so this notation are um so so th there might be some matrix which is both congruent and similar and it can be opposite also it can be congruent but not similar but similar but not congruent also okay so all are possible so now um uh, now we're going to discuss the theorem what we asked in last lectures that 
what happened to the matrices is coming from matrices of same bilinear forms but with respect to two different bases okay so this is the theorem that tells you open the theorem so i am assuming that i have a final vector space so let uh, v v a finite dimensional um, vector space uh, over a field safe and uh, you fix basis also so two bases with uh, say two other bases basis so uh, so one basis is basis is beta one which is of the form so elements are the v1 v2 and Vn, so n is the dimension of the vector space V, and the other one is say V2, which is having omega 1, omega 2, and omega n is the element of the basis P2. Okay, and so this is this is given to me. And suppose I choose the change of basis matrix which change from beta to coordinate to beta and coordinates. Okay. Uh, then we can find out the relationship between the matrix of bilinear form with respect to these two bases. What is that? So um, also let um, also let Q be the change of coordinate matrix change of coordinate matrix or change of basis matrix or whatever okay and this is what which from where to where so it's changing from beta to coordinates beta on coordinates matrix uh, changing from or changing let's say beta to coordinates Um, into beta one coordinates. Okay, so this is we know that from one matrix, one basis from basis to another basis, you are changing, and the matrix is Q is given. Then for any, uh, then what you can say then. For any bilinear form H belongs to BV, um, what do you know? So, uh, so for bilinear form, there are two two matrix representation with respect to two bases, right? So one is the psi of beta two of H, another one is <coughs> psi of beta one of H. And this theorem tells you that these two matrices are actually congruent. So what does that mean? That means that is uh, Q transpose Q. Okay. So so um, so that is what so so that is uh, the matrix corresponding to uh, Q to H uh, beta two basis of H is congruent to. to the matrix uh, with respect to the basis beta 1 of H. Okay. So that is the theorem tells. So let us try to understand the theorem first. So what does this say? So you start with the finite dimensional in the vector space and two given bases is given, some other basis. And then obviously you have a change of basis matrix. So change of basis matrix is what? That we change one coordinate to another coordinate right and if you have change of basis matrix 
then if you whatever by my following leave there is a relationship between a matrix or bilinear form from one basis to another basis now what is the relation that these two matrices are actually um, congruent to each other okay okay um, uh, so um, Okay, so, 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 so obviously we can have more more than one proof, so let us try to give, there are many proofs actually available, so let us try to give a proof. Uh, so uh, let us write it down the matrix with respect to the basis 1, beta 1 is say A1 or other is A and this kind of AIJs are the coordinates okay and the matrix corresponding to um, okay so psi of uh, beta 2 of h you write down this is the matrix b whose uh, entry is a kind of bij okay and obviously uh, that q also you can write down q as qij okay okay so uh, and then we want to show that a and b are congruent to each other okay okay so uh, so, uh, so before showing that what is known so it is known that uh, the coordinate matrix which sends beta to coordinates that q sends beta to coordinates to beta on coordinates so what does that mean that means by definition this w i is or omega i is are nothing but summation q k i um v k and the k equal to say 1 to n okay and uh, this is 1 and obviously um so okay so so this is this is in general form you will have this thing and i would like to compute the value b i j in terms of w i j right because b i j is the matrix in terms of beta 2 matrix right so in three value to h on w i w so let me write down another uh, elements w i j which will be of the form say q something say r j v r r equal to 1 to n okay so with, with respect to uh, this um, presentation now we'll compute what is how this will look like okay so then what is what is that i through and z column entries of b so this is b i j and b i j has to be uh, h evaluated at omega i omega j or w w whatever okay and now we already has um, we already know that w i will be of these forms so we we'll substitute that value here and then if you substitute then it will be summation of um, q k i and then v k k equal to say 1 to n and then w k i'm just substituting one one time okay now uh, we use the property of bilinear forms if you use the property of bilinear forms so linear in first argument right so Linear in first argument gives us that this will be sum over k equal to 1 to n and then q k i and then h of uh, this v k and omega j okay this is from property linear linear in first argument h is by linear forms okay now we will substitute the value of omega j here so one part is okay here q k i okay and then h v k is there now if we replace this so you call this is r equal to 1 to n uh, q r um, j and v r right yes so again uh, this h is linear in second argument so again we will use the property of linearity i will have 
sum over k equal to 1 to n q k i and then um, sum over um, sum over r equal to so 1 to n q r j okay and then h uh, v k v r okay is that clear h v k v r but h v k v r is what is nothing but uh, giving you the entries of a matrix right because you look at here so yeah so a is with respect to beta 1 right beta 1 has the basis whose elements are v1 v2 vk where is that yes okay. and beta 2 elements of omega 1 and yes so this will give you nothing but the value a k v so you can write it down and let's see what happens so if you write it down k equal to so 1 to n q k i and then sum over um, q r sorry r so this sum over r equal to 1 to n and then q r j right but this is what this is a k r right okay so but this is the product of um, this is the product of a field right and that field product field field is geometry right with respect to multiplication also so a k so you can write down this a k r times q r j so that will be product of matrices also okay so this is being clear that you can write down that summation k equal to 1 to n q k i and then this you can write it down a k r and q r j and your r is running from 1 to okay so this is okay so what is that so this is a nothing but the product of two matrices one is uh, a and the one is q right this is simple this is a product right so you can write down that this is this is nothing but when, when r is running from 1 to n so you will have uh, this is the entries kj my entries of the matrix aq okay so so this, this is the kj entry you can write it down as um 1 to n q k i and this will be in product of matrix a and q and then take when r equal to 1 to n means the k and j will remain so this is the k j entry k k row and j column entry of the product of the matrix a q that is nothing but this okay and again as we can even because matrix um so th there is one more thing so here you can um, yes yeah, so this is ki and this is kj but when i need to take product what i need i need either uh, uh so, so uh, yes yeah, so i need ik instead of k right if i need uh, if i have ik then i can have ik and kj to ij right so if this q ki is given which is um uh, Okay, so Q, this is given, which is actually uh, the ith k row and ith column entries of the matrix Q, right? So if it is given, then I can take. Uh, uh, so this is actually I k the element of the transpose matrix, right? Because my Q for transpose, what happened? Q I k and uh, it's nothing but q i k is, k i is nothing but q i k of transpose element right so you can write it down this is as summation k equal to 1 to n and then you can write down the q transpose elements okay or maybe small q transpose element it is other matrix transpose matrix and this the i k entries will be now as k i entry will be now i k entry and then this is nothing but k j so you are done now i k k j so this will be 
if the product oh, and k is adding from one to n so this will be nothing but uh, q transpose a q and then this is the take the multiplication and then this is the i zero and j column matrix right is obvious so 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 what does that mean that means um, i zero and j column entries of b is nothing but the i zero j column entries of this product and hence the matrix b is nothing but q transpose a q and it this proves that uh, b is congruent to a right it's clear b is congruent to a okay okay uh, okay so um this is okay yes and now uh next word in to group so okay next thing is that uh so uh, this tells you that corresponding to two bases if you have two uh, matrix of a given bilinear form then they are congruent to each other but uh immediate corollary is same thing i mean same, something interesting what is that so immediately you can say that if you fix okay so let me write down properly so let b be a finite dimensional um vector space over a field f and suppose you have order basis with and order basis say b1 okay or beta 1 okay and uh, you choose a bilinear forms which is the element of b v bilinear form on v now with respect with with the help of all those things um uh, suppose that um you have a matrix some matrix which is congruent to the matrix of h with respect to the basis b1 a beta one then what happened then the matrix should comes from another basis of the bilinear form okay of the vector space b so how do i do then um so let uh, so you have matrix b which is Such that B is congruent to the matrix of A with respect to the basis B1. Okay, so suppose you have matrix um, uh, B and this matrix is such a nice matrix, is actually congruent to the matrix representation of h with respect to the basis vector which is the basis uh, b1 okay and then this matrix is also very nice matrix this is not any arbitrary matrix this matrix is actually coming from uh, the same bilinear form with respect to another basis okay so then what is the theorem then there exist there exist um uh, an order basis basis uh, okay let me i mean maybe we can write down this is basis v1 v2 vn and order basis v2 which is omega 1 omega 2 omega n okay such that Such that this B is nothing but the matrix of H with respect to the basis B2. Okay. So what is given here? It is here you have a one basis and one bilinear forms and one matrix. Three things given with the property that if you take the basis B1 and find out the matrix representation of H with respect to B1, that matrix 
So the, the original, the other matrix which is B given is common to this matrix. Now our claim is that in this case B is also a matrix of the same bilinear form with respect to some other basis. Okay. So B will be this. Okay. B will be uh, this matrix of H with respect to that this is vector. This is uh, beta 2. Okay. And not only that. Uh, Okay, so, so what, what does that mean? That means so for that. Further, what you know? So, this B will be actually Q transpose um, psi H of this beta 1 of Q uh, for some. Invertible matrix. Q, okay. Further one, if, 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 I mean, this is, this is given that B is um, congruent, so B is actually congruent to A, right? So, what does that mean? That means B will be of this form of sum. Then, this Q is change of asymmetric, so then uh, this Q is the change of this Q is not any arbitrary matrix, this is actually the change of this quadrant matrix. Change of coordinate matrix which. Changes uh, this beta two to beta one. Yes, beta two coordinates into beta one coordinates. Okay, so so this is so nice. Uh, this is corollary from our theorem that I am just going to prove immediately. But it's so nice that if you know one matrix, uh, uh, one matrix, one form, and one basis with the property that the that the matrix is congruent to the matrix of the bilinear form A to this the basis, then you can. Then this matrix is not arbitrary. This is also coming from some basis, okay? And that basis is actually, uh, and then then that Q will be actually change the basis matrix, right? Now how to define Q? The only thing is how to define, and that is obvious, very obvious. So you define, uh, uh, so so you define your W J uh, new basis vector such that it is. Q is given, so Q I J and V I. V is also given. Um, I equal to one to n. Okay. We define by this. If we define by this, then what happens? Then this is obvious that this is uh, for J equal to one. Let me write again. Okay. Now Q is invertible is given already, right? so that tells you that. Uh, this W1, W2, Wn. So this is my basis T forms the basis of V as Q invertible, right? If Q invertible, then it sends one basis to another basis, right? Invertible means uh, this is injective and surjective in the map, so this is isomorphism, right? So it is invertible. Okay, so this is the basis. And the way we define this, so that is nothing but, uh, and also, also Q is change the basis matrix, right? Also, Q is the change of coordinate matrix. So,
symmetric circuit. This is clear. And hence, obviously, by our previous theorem, uh, it is given that my B is Q transpose uh, psi beta 1 of H of Q. Uh, but uh, uh, this beta, because the way we define my omega j, so this beta would be nothing but psi of uh, beta 2 of h, and this is nothing but from the previous theorem. Okay, so then this is a proof. So, uh, uh, okay, so so far we discuss about how uh, how the bilinear forms and their corresponding methods look like. Now we will discuss another important concept uh, of a uh, bilinear form which is called diagonality. Okay, so uh, this concept we are going to discuss. Uh, dia go on this of, of bilinear form. Okay. Now, for this, obviously, not every, uh, I mean, not every, like, any arbitrary bilinear form, you can't do it. You need a specific type of bilinear forms, and those are called symmetric bilinear forms. So, so let us define what is the meaning of that. So, I already discussed one, but let me define properly. So, a bilinear form. It belongs to some on some vector space. It is symmetric, or is called a symmetric bilinear form, whatever. If what happens if h of the natural one h x y for any two vector, they are same h y x for all vectors belongs to the vector space B. Then we call this H is a symmetric bilinear form. Okay. Okay. So, um, yeah. So in this case, when I have a symmetric bilinear form, uh, then obviously you can give some proof, immediate proof, that if you start with a mini basis, okay, and then you find out uh, the matrix representation of the symmetric bilinear form belongs to this symmetry matrix, and conversely, okay. And let us prove that. So, what does that mean? Symmetric bilinear forms are those whose matrix with respect to some basis is symmetry matrix. Okay. Okay. So, um, so we will fix a basis first, and then we will check. Okay. Okay, so let us now uh, discuss this theorem on symmetric bilinear form. So, theorem. So, this theorem tells you that, okay, so I will start with a finite vector space. So, let uh, B be a finite dimensional, dimensional um, vector space. For a field F, and you start with a bilinear form, so H belongs to BV. Okay, and what we're going to prove, we are going to prove the symmetric bilinear forms are essentially coming from symmetric matrices. Okay, so that correspondence between um, between the bilinear forms and matrices, if you restrict. And the, the map on symmetry bilinear form, the other side will have symmetry matrix. This is the theorem actually. So, and and obviously, we fix a basis, obviously, basically, B something say B1, B2, Vn, B, an order basis, something you fix it, basis of V, okay. So uh, then um, H is symmetric if 
you should not leave what happened the matter representation of h with respect to the basis b is actually is a symmetric matrix okay So this is a theorem that the matrix is the matrix. Okay, so now uh, the proof is not difficult. So how do we give a proof? So you just start with so that is it is given v1 v2 vn and let me write down the a is the matrix of a to this to this basis p okay whatever a is a i j i through and j column okay um so there are two parts in the proof so first let us assume so uh, let us assume that it is symmetric that means it is symmetric by linear forms okay so it is symmetric means each of x y equal to each of y x for any x y right so in particular uh, so then when we evaluate on basis vector so each of vi vj is nothing but each of vj and vi right but left hand side is nothing but aij and right hand side is nothing but avi what does that mean that means that um, that uh, if you if you take the um, transpose they are same right so what does that mean that means a equal to a transpose that implies a is symmetric symmetric done so the matrix uh, uh, representation of a to the respect to the basis b is symmetric matrix okay so now we will prove the uh, converse part. Converse part tells you that, so conversely, uh, let us assume that this A, which is AIJ, which is uh, basis matrix of A with respect to the basis beta is symmetric. Is a symmetric matrix symmetric matrix let us assume that this is symmetric matrix then i need to show that the valid forms are symmetric so uh, in this case we recall we, we, we define other maps so define uh, other maps that j equal to v plus v to the field a by g of x y is nothing but h of y x and we remember it proves that it is also bilinear form right so then it is also bilinear form okay and then you can talk about um, uh, what are you um, can talk about what are the matrix representation of j look like so um so so if if um, so let uh, your matrix C, which is matrix of J with respect to the basis beta of J. Suppose this is this. Then we know that uh, C i J will be nothing but J of V i V J, right? But J of V i V J is nothing but H of V J V i. That means this is uh, H of V J V i is nothing but uh, AI direct over yeah so this is AI AGI but A is symmetric that I assume I assume that this is symmetric matrix so AI is equal to AGI and then this is AIJ okay so CIJ and AIJ are same for all I this is true for all IJ belongs to one and N right for every i this is true, so under that matrix, that means the matrix A and matrix C is equal, right? Clear? Now you see that, so you recall that what are these 
see here this is vv this is a bilinear form this is the matrix okay so you have two matrices here one is c element and the element is a you know they are same right but um, the pre-image are say this pre-image of these two matrices uh, so now, now um, so 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 these maps i of b so you choose that map psi so if they are same they are pre image with respect to the psi has to be same right they cannot be different because if their pre images are different and uh, then the map may not be one one right so this is not one one then like, so as so so th this is um, uh, Coming from the fact that we already proved, uh, we already proved that this psi of beta is a uh, isomorphism between vector spaces, right? So as psi of beta is an isomorphism, this is also one, all right? So uh, what does that mean? So this isomorphism means what? That means. Uh, uh, the pre images of this psi beta of h and this one is psi beta what is that yeah psi beta of j this is j so the psi beta of j this equal implies a equal to j right because this is um, this is my C, this is my A, these two are same, so the H equal to J, right? So H equal to J, so these binary forms are equal, and hence, um, so H of XY equal to J of YX, but H equal to J, so this is H of YX. So H is H of XY equal to J of YX, this is true for all XY belong to the vector space V and that proves that H is a symmetric bilinear form so it is symmetric okay so this is the proof for symmetric bilinear form okay so um, uh, maybe uh, we will discuss one more concept and stop for today and this concept is that diagonalizability what we are discussing we will start so let this let us define. So we say that uh, a bilinear form a by linear form H on a finite dimensional. Finite dimensional uh, vector space. So V is called diagonalizable. No, uh, analyzable. Okay. What happens if there exists? A basis beta of B such that the matrix representation of H with respect to the basis vector beta. Okay, uh, is a diagonal matrix. So concept is almost similar to the diagonalability of uh, linear uh, maps, right? So we say that linear maps diagonalizable if we can find out the basis uh, such that the representation the matrix with respect to the same basis is a diagonal matrix. Right? So here uh, obviously uh, C can define same thing, and, uh, and the obvious. With the definition is the obvious theorem is what so theorem that when you have a 
bilinear formula diagonal level then has to be symmetric okay minimum of is for final and vector space okay so let uh, v be a finite dimensional finite dimensional vector space over a field f and um, um, H B A diago diago na lizeval bilinear forms bilinear form on V okay then H must be symmetric, symmetric form, symmetric valiant form. Then H is a symmetric valiant form, symmetric bilinear form. Okay. In this case, H will be symmetric bilinear form, and the proof is. Um, Proof is also not difficult, so you start with the diagonal which is given. So, so what is given? That H is diagonalizable, right? But what is the definition of diagonalizability of a finite form? That means you must have a basis, okay? Um, our basis is that the matrix is diagonal, right? So, so that means there exists. Now, order basis B of this basis of V such that um, such that what happens such that uh, this um, uh, psi of H of this B is say some diagram to say D is a diagonal Okay, so this is a diagonal matrix. Now uh, uh, we know that every diagonal matrix is symmetric, right? Because uh, only diagonal integer can be non-zero, other than everything is zero. So diagonal matrix is symmetric. Okay, so but this symmetric matrix. So, so that is the proof. So, so this is this is symmetric. So that's the from previous theorem. So that's it is symmetric. So what is that? So whenever you have finite number vector space and bilinear forms, the diagonalizability implies symmetric. Okay. Now the question is that what about the converse? So is that converse is uh, true? The answer is uh, no. Converse of the this theorem is not true. Okay, so what does that mean? So uh, remark. Converse of uh, the above theorem. Theorem is not true so what does that mean that means there exists a binary form which is symmetric but it's not diagonal event, right so the example how do you counter example so you start with uh, your, your field is say z1 to z having two elements right field with two elements 0 and 1 now you take vector space b which is uh, this z1 to z plus z1 to z I mean, I mean, F2, you can say that, F2, over if. Okay. And then you define the map, H from B cross V to V, F, to check that whether H is, so this is, this is, I am defined by A1, A2, uh, 
uh, this is the a2 right so a1 a2 b1 b2 and they are defining this as a1 b1 uh, so this is under determinant but here because on f is minus 1 equal to plus 1 so i can write down this is plus of a1 b2 plus a2 b1 so this is actually determinant of this uh, you can think this is a matrix right a1 b2 and b1 b2 but minus one plus one are same on z mod two z, so you can define by this. Okay, so so so, so this is a bilinear form, and this is obviously symmetric, right? Uh, uh, so so in fact, uh, if we choose the standard order basis on zero zero one, then what happened? Then the matrix form of H will be. So if you choose 1, 0, 0, 1, so this will be, if you value this, so you will see that this is 0, 1, 1, 0. Okay, so thus H is a symmetric bilinear form, right? Symmetric bilinear form. But now we will just claim that H is not diagonal level. Okay, I mean, uh, so this matrix is not diagonal level, then I am done. But on the contrary, it is accepted. Okay, so, so, so claim uh, this zero one zero one zero is not diagonalizable over if an if is at z mod to z. Okay. Now on the contrary, suppose not. So on the contrary, suppose uh, this is diagonalizable, diagonalizable. Okay, suppose then. Um, and then uh, obviously you can find out the uh, matrix such that okay so 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 obviously you can, you can find out the basis such that uh, that okay then then there exists a basis something say b2 of v such that what happened by definition such that the matrix representation with respect to B2 of H is a diagonal matrix, right? So this is some matrix, diagonal matrix. Uh, something say B or D, whatever. Maybe let me write on D, diagonal is a diagonal matrix. Okay. Now you, you see that uh, with respect to B, you have this, and with respect to B2, you have this. But we know that these two are congruent, right? So what does that mean? That means D has to be congruent to B. So there exists, there exists some uh, Q invertible matrix, invertible matrix, so is that. Um, so is that what happens? So, uh, so let me write down the name here. So maybe this is my matrix A, and so D has to be equal to Q transpose A and Q, right? Because A and D are uh, coming from the same binary form, but to different bases, so they are congruent, right? Um, but but you see that it is invertible matrix, and uh, uh, and you see that rank of A is true, right? So, so the rank of D is nothing but rank of A, which is true, as Q is invertible, right? So invertible means this is isomorphism, so it's invertible. Okay. Now D is a diagonal matrix. Rank is true. Diagonal means all the so the so what is that meaning so this has to be zero 
and diagonal so diagonal can be zero now right but diagonal cannot be zero because the rank is two so diagonal has to be non-zero but uh, these are entries from the uh, factors uh, the field f which is zero to z so what are the elements which is non-zero element zero to z there's only one option which is one right so is the only choice right choice of d we have no other choice because these diagonal the other entry has to be zero and the diagonal can be non zero and zero but diagonal cannot be zero because rank is two uh, if diagonal one of the diagonal is zero element the rank will become one or zero right so both the elements of the diagonal in entries has to be non zero which is equal to one because in z mod to z there is only one non zero entries which is one right so this is a diagonal matrix so this has to be of this form okay so if these of this form then uh, so then how the q look like so if q will be say for example a1 a2 a3 a4 suppose q is that then uh, q transpose will be obviously a1 a2 a3 and a4 right so you can write down your from the fact that d equal to q uh, these on the one and you have one zero zero one on the other end you have a1, a2, a3, a4 and then a is 0, 1, 0, 1 sorry 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and then a1, a2, a3, a4 now we we'll try to find out what is happening here so um, if you take the product of these two things then you will have um, so uh, okay so So you'll have a1 into uh, a3 plus a1 into so this is a1 this and then you multiply yeah so a1 a3 a1 a2 So maybe let me just do one by one instead of writing the final answer, then it will be better. So it's zero, then a two. Then a one zero a four a three, right? Then you have a one, a two. 3a4 right now if you multiply that it will be what so a2 a1 a2 1 so a1 a2 plus a1 a2 if you multiply that thing so you'll have a2 a3 and plus a1 a4 third one is what third one is uh, a1 a4 plus a2 a3 same element and the last one is what a4 a3 is a3 a4 plus a3 a4 yeah so i am done now because a2 a1 a2 plus a1 a2 is nothing but twice of that right so this is coming twice of some element uh, a1 a2 i don't care what are these elements similarly last one also twice of a3 a4 right but over z2, z1 to z, this is 0, this is also 0, right? So this matrix is a something with diagonal is 0. But on the other hand, the left hand side diagonal is non zero. So thus, we have a contradiction. So thus, we have a contradiction. Okay. If you have a contradiction, means what? So we assume that. This is diagonal, right? So, 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 what does that mean? That means A is, is not diagonal. Okay. So I'll stop here.